so far. Okay, good, that's in the right place. That is going okay. Why do my stats say that I am offline? Uh, don't think there's anything in particular to do in here. Let's go talk to Hope. Although, actually... Throw the dang thing down. There we go. Is that close enough? Yes. Um. Where is the image that shows me? Where to get the dang silver chocobo? I want my silver chocobo. Oh, there it is. That's not going to give me the angle I want. I think you have to get it onto that, like, hollow projector thing. Alyssa, get out of the way. Zero risk plan. Nice objective. It is completely unclear what the mobility of these platforms is supposed to achieve. Promise this will all be worth it. Right, 
really want to get down to the lower level. Like, where that... Uh, Let's see if this does the trick. There we go. That's definitely not landing on the actual platform. That fell short. Hey, there we go. Can I do anything with my silver chocobo at the moment? No, because it needs orbs. That will require some grinding. Right. Hope told us that he invented a machine called a time capsule. That's how they got here. Back in 13 AF, Hope devised a plan to build an artificial Falci. It was called the proto Falci Project. He wanted to use the new technology to re-levitate Cocoon. But then one day, Hope saw a certain prophecy in the Oracle Drive. So I activated the Oracle Drive and watched the prophecy. I saw you fighting the proto Falci, and I saw you screaming out at me. Your machines are driving me nuts! Well... I was getting pretty ticked off by that point. <laughs> well, exactly. So we were forced to reevaluate the project and eventually abandon it. Okay, you saw Sarah getting mad at you, so you canceled your project and then poof, the proto Falci disappeared. Is that about right? We didn't destroy it so much as it never existed in the first place. That's the miracle of we time travel, no. Path to the future. If the proto Falci had managed to get control of Cocoon, it would have made itself the second Eden, and we'd be back where we began. Yeah, it would have been just like how it was on the old cocoon. That's a really awkward really camera angle. Couldn't let that happen. You had to levitate cocoon using only human technology. Right. Not to mention that if you had kept with the original plan, your machines would have killed you. Really? Then we owe you our lives. Thank you. Funny, you lose your temper and the whole future changes. Right, now talk to Alyssa. So, I bet you're dying to know how we came to the future, huh? You explained that already, didn't kind you? Of. You've heard about the time capsule we used? It's a device that slows down time only for its occupants. The effect is caused by the creation of a powerful gravitational field and, well, 
Essentially, we just slept as the outside world flashed forward into the future. This capsule of yours, it can't take you back, can it? Unfortunately not. And considering it broke down after a single use, I doubt it'll prove to be a popular method of time travel. You risked your own life for the sake of Cocoon. Oh, the director was there with me. Hey, Sarah. After coming to the future myself, I... I think I understand how you must feel. The Academy has welcomed us with open arms, and we can research as we always have, but... I mean... I really, they're lucky that the Academy survived 390 years. It's a long time for a government. fellow time travelers we can face the future on friendly terms it's not clear what Alyssa's is going on about that really the academy has made progress on its investigation into the 13th arc at this stage there is good news and there is bad news let's hear the good news first We've discovered that the Ark's reactor is powered by an ore cluster, known as the Graviton Core. By collecting these, there's a possibility that the new cocoon will be up in the sky in no time. That is good news. Yeah, okay. So, now you gotta hit us with the bad news. Each ore cluster provides only a certain amount of power. The 13th Ark, for example, requires a single Graviton Core. We're going to need multiple you haven't missed anything. The 13th arc hasn't been mentioned previously. Need a hand with the search? If there's one thing we're good at, it's looking for weird objects. We could use the help. With you two on the case, we'll have those cores in no time. I'll put together some data on Graviton cores. Check in with the Academy front desk. Right, I think I have three Graviton cores so far. They are fragments. I have four. That's right, you need five and there are seven total. And if you get all seven, you get some extra stuff. Um. Not start handing over graviton cores yet, because what we're going to do at this point is just go for a wander around the game. Alyssa told me all about you. You're helping us find the graviton cores, isn't that right? And perfect timing. I just got an update with the latest info. This ore, is it really that valuable? Oh, yes. The Academy have sent survey teams all over the place. They've searched everywhere, but they haven't found a shard of the stuff. Hmm. But according to this latest data, our scientists use resonance imaging to identify a possible deposit. So we do have a defined location where a team can start looking. But it's just... It's just what? Well, it's kind of in a different time. <laughs> Sounds like a job for us, all right. Here, show me that data. <laughs> right. So, Yasha's Massif 100, which I don't think I have access to yet. And Zeta is in Erba 400, which is an absolute chore of a location. Like, I love it, but also, yikes. Uh, Sun 
with 400. I can't remember the sequence of gates for that one. And there are there's one they don't give you information for at this stage as well. They need a way to lift the new cocoon into the sky. And we can help them do it. Maybe that's why we've been brought here. But basically we need wild artifacts. That screen, by the way, was like an NPC just randomly falling over because they do that a lot. Um. Uh. Right. The gate over there still hasn't materialized because that's like a real gate, not a wild artifact gate. And to unlock that one, you have to finish this chapter first. I'm going the wrong way. Doesn't matter terribly much. Anyway, this is what the alleys look like when they're not um, crawling with Seath. Hey, Sanai, how's it going? How many wild artifacts do I have at the moment? I think I have four. even keep him. Three, okay. I wish it told you where the wild artifact gates go to. For each location. Um, let's see. I know I need to do Yashas 100 and Sunlith 400. That's two wild artifacts. Does either of those locations have a wild artifact? Uh, that does, but I don't think I can do that quest yet. Uh, what about... Neither of the Airbus does. So I can't do... Where's the one in the Vile Peaks? No. But I can go back to the Arkild Step and get that one. So there are four total available. Um, I think I already opened... let's see... <laughs> I 
There's a gate here somewhere. Where is it? Oh, it's up there. Um, and this gate... No, this gate doesn't unlock a an area that I need to go to at this point. Yes, I've already unlocked Airbus 300. So, still to unlock, I've got File Peaks 10, Erba 400, Yashus 100, Sunlith 400, uh, File Peaks 200, that does add up, but it means I'm not going to be able to do all of them however hard I try. Um, let's go back to the Arkill step. Time. And grab the wild artifact that's here that I forgot to get. That I hope I forgot to get. Which is over here somewhere. Um, complete this little bit of exploration. And then we get to run around the field for a little while. Because there are no chocobos yet. Oh, hang on. Before I do that, I need to set it to stormy, I think. Yeah. Stormy, which is left, down, right up. On the weather machine. From sheep to make clothing and blankets. Those are both up. Make everything purple! Purple is obviously the colour of the storm. Also the colour of Seath, apparently. At least there are decent stocks of uh, CP to be had from relatively quick encounters. While the game is in this state. Uh oh. On the other hand, this guy might be a bit of a chore. Holy shit. This is going to kill me. Yep. Yikes. Hey, sorry. That was the thing that was not supposed to be fought at this stage, I feel. It is indeed glowing nipples monster again. Whoops.
this I probably have to fight. But I ought to be able to fight. Fuckers do so much damage. I suppose the game's hardest bosses do all spawn in this area in these conditions. To get too fussy. Not getting many brownie points for that performance, though. Somewhere around here is a cat cross statue I've not... Uh, let's not fight that guy. It's not that cat cross statue, there's another one. Over here, I think. What's just spawned? No, 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 no. That would go extremely badly if I tried fighting that now. Right, that's my way home. But first... whoops. Somewhere along here... Somewhere along here I thought... Oh, there it is. God, look at this. Oh, don't spawn now. I don't know why I'm exploring so thoroughly at the moment. Like, we will be... holy shit. Uh, we will be back here. This should unlock chocobos. I've heard about what you've 
done. You're one of us here. Take this chocobo. Hey, I got a chocobo. <laughs> uh, that I'm not going to use for a while yet. Uh... Uh, back to the map of time itself. Uh, trying to remember to save more thoroughly after what happened yesterday. Um, I think we have to go back to Hell City first. Where the heck is it? No, seriously, where is it? Is it that one? Yes, it is. It's this one. Time. While I'm here, I can turn in a couple of locations that I fully explored. I think think and try to remember where the heck the uh, wild artifact gate is ah the wild artifact gate is on completely the opposite side of the area to the map completion thing. Also, I missed a bit. Possible, I can't get to the bit that I missed. No, I must be able to. But not by the most direct routes, so we will go round. Not down there. That 1% is haunting me. And that's why we're going somewhere else. There are there is a quest to fully explore every area, so don't worry, we will be dealing with the one percent. I think it's this bit, is that right? Hundred percent explored, right. Now I need to get all the way over there. Do you think I can do by going in this direction? Oh, hey, I got an actual uh, preemptive.
think what's interesting about like revisiting particularly this area in this game is that for all this is a game about like how time travel temporal motion transforms places this place clearly has not been uh, transformed by the resolution of the story so like the last bit in the the upper left corner of the map had different music and no enemies because that was where the climax of the of the area story took place but this bit is just as it was before that climax happened um, I am facing exactly the wrong direction I need to go this way I'm going to try to take note of how much I'm walking back in time by uh, backtracking through the level. Oh god, do I have to jump up here? Looks suspiciously like I'm going to have to jump up this friggin' ramp. Yep, this is going to take a while, folks. Please feed my chocobo, he's so weak. This is definitely a similar set of enemies to what would have normally been here during progress, so... Uh... At least it's a decent supply of XP. here, go away. I think the real jip with this area is that you can never outrange an enemy. Well, 
like once you've strayed into a well, once an enemy has been spawned on top of you, even you get miles away from it, like I did there, there is no escape. I can't even remember if there's any reward for doing this early. I have to go down here. And it's in here. Floor plans for Augusta Tower. Oh, cool. There's CP to be had. Are probably... What we need is data from places. But I fully explored this place. Haven't I? Yeah. Why isn't there one for Academia? Actually, I know why it is. Presumably, I have to also do Academia 500 before I can turn in Academia. Even though that's a completely different level. So back we go. Because the gate I want to open is miles from here. Keep moving. This is an extremely bad place to stand still. So many enemies in this area. Get out of here before any more of them spawn. Cool, good. That's like four and a half thousand CP in maybe 20 minutes. Probably somewhat less than that, actually. Although apparently I've been streaming for 45 minutes somehow. I'm not quite sure how that's happened.
Here's the gate. Oh no, let me open the damn gate. Now I guess we're just gonna have to fight another encounter. There's gonna be at least two more trips to this area, you know. Right, yes, that's 100. A few bits and bobs to do here. Now, which one is this? Oh, it's Blood Orb time! Nice! Something is happening in the ruins of what was once the most prosperous city in the world. Many of the scientists and researchers who came to investigate the site have gone missing. And when they do, ominous sphere-shaped objects appear in their place. Mog seemed to know all about the orbs. He told us they're called the Rubies of Grief. They're manifestations of the remorse and sadness left by the unlucky souls who disappeared into the paradox. The orbs resonate with a powerful emotion sealed inside. What kind of message are they trying to tell us? Right. Records show that an evil monster is behind us. Going a little hiking trip, are we? We should leave this in the hands of the military. Oh. Let's make sure we get this. Right, that's one of the quest items already found. Good. My previous boss was transferred here from the Brescia ruins. He taught me everything I know. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us. He was a nice man, and he took care of me. He was my mentor from day one. If only he hadn't come here, he'd probably still... This is where we really start to get into, like... The, the idea of fucked up spaces, of, of the, the traumatic effects of, of the paradox. What I've learned here is that life has always been hard, no matter what the era. We found remains of what could have been a monster attack. Hey, Noel, do you feel that? Yeah, it's like someone's talking to me inside my head. It's a crazy chocobo, we're not riding him. Because I don't have enough uh, um, Gissel Greens at the moment. What's seven? 
Right, I can't do that one. An awful tragedy took place here many years ago. Two. There it is. Tablet, jelly goods. What's six? Right, six I can't get yet because it's they disappeared. awarded at the end of this sequence of quests. So good. Come do oh, hello. Fish lizards. Don't swamp water me. It is not okay for you to swamp water me. Uh, that will be a quest orb, but I think you have to complete them in order. That's the one I need for the current quest. Uh, do I want to go back and complete it and hope I can pick up another one? I don't think so. I think I'll go and collect. see if I can't collect them all first. Oh no, wait, hang on. I've got them all, haven't I? Bulb of Hope, Seal Tablet, Calm Divide. Let's go back and. <coughs> Hello! Oh man, can I capture a green chocobo? Green chocobos, if you hadn't guessed, are the medic type. Juggled. Hello. Hello. How goes things? Pretty good, although I failed to capture my green chocobo on my first try. Sad face. Oh well. Despite getting the, the fatal blow with a um Feral link. Yeah. There'll yeah. be other opportunities. But yeah, things are going alright. I am doing the blood orbs. The blood orbs are fun. Yep. It's also really, really weird as a, like a Final Fantasy thing that's just like, oh, by the way, this area has blood orbs. Well, I think, like I was saying earlier, it's where we really get into the 
where this game leans into how horrific it paints time travel as being. Yeah. Like, um, it's really the the bit where the mood changes from being oh these are weird spaces and nothing makes sense to holy shit. <laughs> yeah. This is a horror game, kind of. Oh, don't Isn't this like a completely optional section too? Uh, it's not completely optional because you have to come here to get a graviton core. Oh, well, actually, right. technically it's optional because there are seven graviton cores and you only need five of them. But yeah, that that's that's always been the weird sticking point for judging this game's not versus optional content. Yeah, well, I that's kind of the thing, right? They they went from making a game that's basically completely linear to one which very carefully avoids any kind of linear restriction. Um, For the most part, like there's still there's still some you will you will have to do all these chapters, but yeah, not not all the levels within them. Hmm. Well, I'm avoiding playing D and D today. Oh, because like I just don't feel like it, That's and I right. think the DM is is gearing up for a boss fight when the not boss fight fight we had was just like us getting our shit kicked in by a bunch of zombies. Ah, uh. made of water, and I'm a wizard with fire spells. Uh. So I'm just doing puzzles right now. Spent money on puzzle games, and I think I've spent more time on puzzle games than I have any other real games on Switch. <laughs> That's fair enough. Right, there's two more orbs. And I can go out this way. Oh yeah, there's a bit of area that I haven't been able to explore yet. Green Chocobo! Good luck, Colleen. Yeah, Godspeed with Yasmet. Don't use poison, you dingus. I was also relieved with the duty of having to come up with a dinner plan because my mom was just like, "Let's do pizza." Fair enough. We picked up a, let's do it. So we picked up a taken big pizza while we were out. And now I don't have to think about dinner. Charlie, good. <laughs> no green chocobo for me. Wait, what's in this chest? It's a null weapon randomly. Why is that here? Is it any good? Oh, that's right, it's the magic plus one. That's why it's in a weird place. Yeah. What a weird place. <laughs> I think you get Sarah's strength plus weapon in a similarly odd place, to be fair. Mm -hmm. I can't remember where. I think my characters just forgot where the ground was for a little while. No, they're just doing air combos, like all good RPG protagonists can do. But they're doing air combos against a slug! Yeah, one of the low, one of the lowest enemies in the game. Oh, video games, why are you like this? I 
seem to remember getting incredibly stuck on this side quest for a while. And I can't remember why. Am I allowed to solve this puzzle yet? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like there's a... a... Oh man, let's do some hands of time. Get that solver out. Bookmark that fucking page. Uh, I will do that in a minute. Ah, this one's not timed. Yeah, the it's the it, the timed ones also the timed ones start when you hit the first one. Hmm. So you can do you can do full route of planning and have your shit ready to go, which yeah. is nice. Enter numbers starting from 12 o'clock position. 3, 3, 1. Basically, sorry, four, when you step four, when you select a number, the one. hands will sp go to that and then go the number uh, in each direction. And then you have to chain all of them together in order to clear the board or clear okay. the clock. We are going three, this four, this three, this one, this four, one, uh, must be that one, bam. And eventually they have, like, upwards of actually, like, 13 numbers on the clock and a time limit. And it's a pain in the ass. Yep. Right, that's a four at the top. If I wanted to do more of those don't step on the same tile twice puzzles, I'd play Pokemon. <laughs> but I'm very tired of those puzzles from the few times Four. they've appeared in games. Five. Four. Green is three, isn't it? Yes. Three. Oh my god, those are sixes. Yep. The typography is bad, too. <laughs> yeah. Two, doesn't five, help with this. Two. Five, five. Two, five, five. Three six four six two three six four six two five two five five two five five Okay Three Six Oh this one's not even timed for some reason. Maybe they decided to be lenient. Two it's completely arbitrary and I don't understand, honestly, like, it's just... 
And also start the clock is such a bad wording because it's a clock puzzle, but also there's timing on it sometimes. Yeah. This one looks... Anomaly resolved. Let's have that power. Let's see. Oops. Well, we haven't done all the orbs yet. Or got the Graviton Core. Um, but I do want to come back for this gate. I know that in one of these zones, there's a fragment or like treasure that spawns here, and the guide isn't entirely clear about it. The photo is really bad, and I spent ages searching this entire area for that one fragment. Yep, that sounds about right. Hi, Colleen. Hello. Yo. Um. Oh, fish. I should probably have done this area a little bit earlier in my uh, uh, playthrough, actually. Yeah. They're not putting on the part now. Yeah. Green chocobos would have been a challenge. Yeah, but they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Chocobos are, are big, scary boys. Well, mostly in terms of, like, just the amount of healing they can put out. Yep. Somewhere down here. There it is. Whoops. Good, I managed to in interrupt its choco kill. Otherwise that could have been bad. Launch chocobos look so sad, they got all floppy. Yeah. That's how a lot of launch stuff like they're just like, oh no! I'm stuck here now. it and this puzzle game at the same time, <laughs> just because when I get into puzzle games, I get into puzzle games. The second I mentioned that I bought Hollow Knight, I had like a couple friends just like, just start to message me, it's like, oh, you're gonna love it so much. <laughs> like, dang. <laughs> oh, that's right, now I have to go back to... Oh man, Bunker Beast. 
another good one to catch if I can. I had the shortest doctor visit I've ever had today. Oh? I walked in, they took an x-ray and went, yeah, you don't have any stones, make sure you drink some more, and if you want to come back in like six weeks, we That's can good, at least. set up like a proper plan, and I was just like, nah, I think I'm good, actually, and they were just like, well, okay, bye. <laughs> that was in like five or ten minutes tops. Um, they're basically random, if you kill them using a feral link attack like I just did, you increase the chance of getting the drop. And that time it worked. By, by the synchronicity of level, I'm pretty sure. Does it like actually vary? I, I thought it was just a fixed, it doubles the amount. I was, I'm, I was always working under the assumption that like, the synchronized thing up in the top right was just like, because that does work on like the damage a bit, but also it seemed to help out more when I did the QTEs better. Eh, maybe. Just be, uh, it's possible, like, I can't remember. <laughs> Less swamp water, you little fucks. Okay, so this is really silly that I don't know this at this point of F of 12. But what exactly decides whether or not you can switch out party members? When they're whether or not they're being targeted by something. So and that includes friendly as well as enemy abilities. If they're being targeted by something, their name will be read and you can't remove them from the party. I, uh, I don't understand how that's working right now. Pinello's just in the corner of the room doing nothing. Is, is she even... effect queued? Like, is there some big spell going off that she's waiting behind to cast? There's, there's no effect queue in the game. Oh, no, that's right, they took the effect queue out. Uh, in that case, I don't know. I just want her out, she's out of MP. <laughs> hmm. That's right, we have to solve this, and then in the other optional Yashas Massif, that's where you fight the enemy, I think. Yep. More clocks! If you decide to play 13-2 for yourself, have that fucking just search for... Uh, I forget what I searched for, but it was just like... Final Fantasy 13-2 Clock Puzzle Solver is what this page yep. is titled. If you just search for Hands of Time Solver, you'll find like a zillion. One, three, two. One, one, two. Because honestly, it's three, it's probably just a fun little four. programming practice thing that folks can do. Right. One, th whoops, three, three. Man, that's a lot of twos and fours. Yep. And exactly one three. No, two odd numbers. Okay. Oh, Laura's here, and also Sarana is being harangued by a goose. What? <laughs> Hunter. Monster Hunter. Ah. Oh. Uh. Three, four, two, 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 four, four, two, two, five. Oh, actually click solve, Rebecca. That would help. <laughs> right, two, three, two, four, four, two, five. I think probably the worst.
worst that uh, Basil Juice ever got was when I was in the PC version. I was farming Great Jagras with Bandit Mantle just because I needed some money. And the one quest I was getting, I had got the investigation, had Basil, and he was just always in my face. It was the worst. 4 4 one, five, one. Two, four, two, four, four. Four, four, one, five, one, two, four, two, four, four. And solve. <clears throat> four, one, four, two, two, four. Oh man, I can't wait for us to start Monster Hunter either, so I know. But getting to HR will also be a bit. Anomaly resolved. Right. Yeah. Have chat oh, back and find out what you're talking about. Hey, Laura. <laughs> the pickle won't be there until she does the investigation for the pickle. It's a story that's been passed down so. for generations that the people of my time believed was true. Long ago, she could theoretically just avoid him altogether for a while. Havoc on its residence. Only a lone seeress had the strength to seal the beast. But at some point, we're gonna have to open that Pandora's box. There was no trace of him anywhere. Still, something was wrong. Yeah, it's unfortunate the way there was something we couldn't see hidden. They kinda implement the DLC monsters that they're not just like in seamlessly implemented within the game, you have to basically unlock them. Yeah. Dumb. And, and also like the location of them fucking like behemoth you really shouldn't be taking on unless you have some augmented gear or and are like hr 30 plus honestly but you can unlock it at fucking 16 so it's just like uh -huh. well, a little irresponsible if you are curious about the pickle laura you will need to wait until we are streaming monster hunter pickle is monster hunter Behemoth, you shouldn't do ever because it sucks. <laughs> You're not wrong, and I'm sad. <laughs> like a, with a with a solid group of people who are good at the game, <laughs> fine. So I you shouldn't do Monster Hunter then. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't do. No, you shouldn't be Behemoth. No, <laughs> no, no shade on you. You just. Love you, Becky, but you're not gonna do it. You're not gonna do it good enough. Like, I mean, like, 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 I, like, whatever the positional stuff that's involved, I can probably do. It's just like actually doing damage while I'm doing it will be a problem. Like, like, it, it, it's an interesting fight because, you know, it's basically, oh, let's take a bunch of MMO mechanics and plop them in this game. You see, that sounds like it's up my street. Yeah, it's too but big. The, yeah, he, he is he is massive and he, all his attacks basically kill in one hit. It's annoying. It's yeah. I like, think like I mentioned, I, you you need to be at least partially augmented, which is like very end game stuff to be able to deal with a lot of his shit. And also like the way armor upgrades work, um, you have to basically unlock more like levels of armor upgrades like for defense. And you have to do that via letting the story and doing all the high-end shit like fighting double tempered basil and doing tempered kirin wow and so just like you need to be at the end game to have the defense to not get one shot right okay. and even then he's he's got a bunch of mechanics to deal with that are just a pain or to put it this way i'm over 300 hours in and i've decided i just don't want to do it <clears throat> That, that I'm not far enough, that, and I yeah. don't feel like, and I don't feel like going through the effort to get far. Enough. So this sounds suspiciously like classic WoW, <laughs> way back in the day, before my time. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if that's a fair argument. Also, Sarna is right. You you don't have to get really deep to like unlock augmenting, but to actually make use of augmenting, well, you need to be like high level HR. 
need to grind forever to get the shit for it. It's random. Yep. <laughs> Fun. It's completely random. I mean, it's Monster Hunter. The whole point is to be hunting monsters constantly, so it's not surprising or, like, bad necessarily, but... It is frustrating to deal with. But, like but, but, but no, like, like, just like, oh, to get the things you need to augment your armor, it's just completely random. There's no, like, specific goal you can set. Like, I'm gonna kill tempered whatever such and such, like, 30 times, and I'll probably get it by then, and it's like, no. <laughs> no, it's like a very low chance. You'll get it, maybe. Yeah. Which, it, which, which is very Monster Hunter, but it's, not great it's it's not a great thing to just like i don't know like 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 i i hate i hate pretty much the entire end game gear grind because it's based on stupid gem slots and augmentation and it's like these aren't fun things i mean in older games it was uh the charms that were random instead of the decorations i mean i mean i'm aware it's just I don't like, I don't like grinding for like, like I, I killed this monster 20 times, that way my, my attack does like 10% more damage, it's like, that's not fun to me. Mm. I'd rather kill something like 20 times and I get to look different. Which that is a part of the game, it's just not the end game. Mm. The forest of Sunlip is a quiet place. And also up until rather recently it didn't really feel like I cocked my ear towards was the even and through the worth of the doing breeze, because everything was so easy. I heard snow. As much as I'd hoped we'd run into my hero, it wasn't him that Yeah, I'm still I'm still not fond of all the fucking obnoxious fucking uh, I think there's someone else here with us. old old guard monster hunter fans. We're just like, well, this game is too easy, and all these fucking newbies are just gonna die when fucking G U comes out, and it's just like fucking chill. Not not everything needs to be a difficulty masturbation contest. Holy shit! Uh, Look, the wait. flans are having a party. Oh, is it flan party time? I love this fucking like chapter sort of zone, whatever. Mm. Plan, it's adorable. It is. Never seen so many of them the paradox ending for this is also good. Looks like they're having fun. I can't remember that one. Don't remind me. We'll do it later in the streams. I mean, it's uh, it's not like the paradox endings really matter. Yeah. Let's let's see it in time. That's so sad. Oh. No, they sure okay. Can find their way back. It's really good though. I know you mean, yeah. but aren't you forgetting something? They're uh, monsters, and I'm a monster hunter. Can you be a monster finder instead? Just this once? <laughs> Just this once. Alright, come on. That's right, we get random metal fans. It's metal slime. Defeated for many, many crystal gem points. If only. <laughs> Unfortunately, you don't get to recruit the cute fans. Except for the one I've already recruited. Because the cute flans are your friends, not your enemies, and you can only recruit your enemies. And lightning. Which you have to fight first. Yes, yeah, true. Right, there's one. Uh, number two is up here. Whoop. Seeping Bree is an unfortunate name for a flan. 
Like, yeah. It's really evocative. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one way of putting it. I, I, I kind of wish I wasn't being evoked right now. Like I was saying, my my issue with mo with world isn't necessarily that it's easy. It's great that it's easy. It's it's obviously a huge success. In it's easy. My only issue is that the way that they've been trying to design difficult content for hardcore fans is really obnoxious to me. Where they just make a monster really large and kill you in one hit. Yeah. Like. That, that seems to be how they're interpreting difficulty. And it seems yeah. to be a consistent issue with their DLC monsters, like uh, Devil Joe's kind of the same way, where I just wish that he was like a little smaller so weapons could reach part, different parts of them easier. But I don't yeah. know if it's like a B team working on their DLC or if they just change the way they design monsters now. But it's it's just obnoxious to deal with. Yeah, I was having issues with Lunastra. Like I, I couldn't even get through her introductory like beater in the arena quest. Cause she just like her gimmick and her her like aggression happening in in concert was the worst. The arena is a bad place to fight Lunastra. It's yeah. Oh. I like I think I think she's the better of the DLC monsters, mostly because she's like a copy of an already existing monster, basically. Yeah. But yeah, that introductory quest is a bit much, especially like in the tiny arena room. Yeah, it basically made me like want to stop playing, and that's a bad way to be like, yeah, hey, here's a new monster you can fight. It makes you want to rage quit. Nice. No. Oh, shit. Okay, I should definitely be taking care of the Seeping Breeze first, because ye gods did that guy just total me. Sounds about right. Well, I, re oops. I recruited a Flandit. whenever when someone's outside. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, a good example of them making interesting endgame content for the more hardcore fans is actually the uh, Kul Teroth Siege mode. Because in yeah, that... Kul, Kul Teroth is pretty rad. In that, Kul Teroth is pretty easy. But what makes it a little bit more interesting is that because it's such like a big like long fight that takes like multiple sessions, you it becomes much more about like optimizing it. And it's like, well, we can we can maybe get this killed in like two runs rather than three if we, you know, upper DPS. And I find that a lot That does sound cool actually. Yeah, and I've seen it's also theoretically possible to solo, which is also <laughs> fucked in a different way because they don't scale the HP at all for that to be reasonable, but yeah, it's definitely... How the fuck am I supposed to put this? 
Um, it's definitely interesting. It, uh, not, now that I'm actually, like, like I just thought of it, it is actually kind of comparable to how you fight Yasmath. <laughs> where it just has a shitload of HP and you just go through multiple sessions. The only difference is that the sessions are, like, strictly timed. And if you don't do enough damage, then the session will end early and you have to go back through. Like, like, like the only annoying part is that, like, the early part of the fight, you're just, like, following it around and hitting it, which isn't the most fun. Yeah. But then, like, it travels to other parts of the map where there's, like, hazards and stuff to deal with, which is a lot more fun. Mm hmm Oh. And also, the fact that there's, like, different phases of both the exploration and, like, fighting her is really fun if you get a group of people who are in, like, a lobby that's doing it. And also, you build up your awards over time. Uh, over multiple runs that you can get a bunch of shit if you do good. I, I haven't actually done it since the first uh, weekend it was available for yeah. a week or whatever. So so I'm not so I'm not sure how it's like to play now. Uh, though I think they added more weapons. Yeah, they added more weapons in the latest patch. I should probably look at that table to see if there's anything I'm interested in. That's... there will be. Just because there's like... 200 something weapons? Or more? Well yeah, like... There's like a fuck like, uh, It's less... like uh... It's less about like, oh I gotta kill this thing 20 times because I absolutely need this thing. But it's more like, oh that's an interesting... Combination of things that are not in the game. Like uh... The favorite one I got is the Paralysis Switch Axe, which is, which uh, in the original pack was apparently one of the more sought after things, because it's a really good paralysis weapon. <laughs> yep. And people have built like entire builds around this weapon that you have like a really low chance on getting. Hmm. But it's like a monthly <clears throat> event, so it's, it's kind of fun. Yeah. I'm still kind of mad that they didn't just make it permanent. Yeah, but... I don't, I don't, I, I don't get the timed event. Well, I kind of get it in that the idea is that they want a rotation of people coming back to the game regularly. Yep. So yeah. they can keep the game alive. I think it may, it, it would probably be a bit more helpful to have like some kind of lo uh, loot lockout system instead. Like an MMO does, or just like schedule it with the fucking the uh, event quests. Like, would they have an event quest system for a reason? Like, I don't know why it has to be like I don't know. It, it feels like they should be using that instead of uh, just making an extra thing that happens once a week every month on top of it maybe just have like because like that's the thing with like the event quest schedule like i don't necessarily like that in limited bounties because it's just like if you're not playing constantly you miss out on shit and like it's guaranteed gems and whatever but like um like the event quests have versions of zora magdaros and xenojiva that you can fight irrespective of them showing up randomly like they would so I don't get why it's not lower like that, where it's just like, maybe they just have an event, like, make culture off permanent, and then have an event quest, or like, a, a an event every few weeks that's just like, oh, hey, increased culture off rewards. So you can maybe get that drop you want. I don't know, it, it just feels like extra exploitative to have a, a weekly thing, and also like... I, I've said this before, I know they're really trying hard to get people to play more, uh, but it's just the fact that they nerf transmog so hard to lock everything with, behind uh, fucking layered armor as a system really sucks. Yeah. What the 
the fuck am I doing? Oh, this is awful. Stupid How puzzle. far down here do I have to go? It should be down here. Oh, that's a stupid way to do things, and it, of course it's the correct one. I hate puzzles. I love puzzles, but I hate finding out that I was doing something stupid. <laughs> like, three minutes before I solved the entire thing. I um, rescued the flans! Yay! Baby flans are with their parent flans. The little ones are up to some kind of mischief. With crazy chocobo music. <laughs> Flat and party. Yep. So the plot of this puzzle game, this really arbitrary plot to this puzzle game, is that this professor invented a thing that turns things into pixels, and then a cat got imbued with that power and is now running across the country, turning everything into pixels, and I have to re reorganize them to turn them back into normal things. <laughs> what are you plotting, Laura? Alfie, are you hungry? Do you want kibbles? Is it dinner time for an Alfie? <laughs> Alfie never listens to my voice though. Alfie! Where do they get all that energy from? This has gone too far. That's it! <laughs> I've about had it with your mischief. You should be ashamed of yourselves for behaving like this. You should know better. Well, what do you have to say for yourselves? <laughs> I forgot the scene where Sarah, like, just... Straight up school teacher scolds the flans. Yep. They said they won't do it again, Kubo. <laughs> no way. They also said she's scary. We don't want her to get mad at us again, so we'll be good from now on, Kubo. All right, that's a promise. Now it's time for all of you to go home. Aww. It was then that I remembered Sarah had been a teacher back in New Bodom, and the kids called her Meanie Miss Farron. I had completely forgotten about that until now. I'll bet she was one of those teachers that was nice when you were good, but could scare you when you weren't. As quick as lightning, she could turn from smiling angel to angry ogre. Yeah, no doubt about it. They're sisters all right. How does Noel know what teachers are like? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sorry, just random, random, fucking brain spark. What the fuck, Noel? How do you know what teachers? <laughs> Maybe he's like inferring from like his grandma or whatever. Yeah. Also, that line is 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 just yeah. It is. <laughs> Adjectives. Who needs them? This is the internet. We have context. Context is powerful. Oh hey, I recruited that whatever it was. Unsaganashi. Unsaganashi. Yeah. Right, that's a saboteur. Ah, cool, there is Sin Sapper. Oh, I should Crystarium, I think. 
No, I am 21 CP short of my next Crystarium point. Fucking... <laughs> Whoops. Oh my god, there's fucking millions of them. <laughs> yeah. Seems about right. At least they don't have a lot of HP. I don't think they summon in this game either. There are enemies that summon, but I don't think these do. Yeah. Oh no, that's right, it's the ones in... Uh, the It's the ones at the end of the world that summon. Yeah. Fuck those guys. <laughs> yeah. Fuck most of the enemies in the final area, to be honest. Zone just is a lot of annoyance. Yeah. And the only upside is that you finally get a, a glide. <laughs> Oh no, I meant in um, 700. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 700 as fuck. What a... What a stupid... Date... Abbreviation. I got... 15 health bars to go. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. Right. I actually, I actually had to get out up out of my chair in order to count them because they're it's small. small. And there's yeah. Many of them. So four sen. Two. Three. Sab. Four. That puts sen twenty five. Uh, yeah, I, calm. I am, I don't know if I'm optimistic or just really, I want further DLC monsters for, uh, Monster Hunter World to be, like, smaller, but, like, I feel like if they're just fucking, like, not trying to be constantly big and threatening, they'll be more enjoyable to fight. Because, like, um... cause, like... I, I know they had a leaked list, and I'm not really super. I like, mean, I, I mean, one of them is an uh, Kieran alt, so uh, that's not going to be big, but it's going to be annoying. Yeah, I just feel like, like you pointed out, the the size issue is an issue, um, yeah. but also there's um, anytime they do like special quests. With differently sized shit, it's awful. Oh yeah, that those things are the worst. Like, fight giant, whatever it was called, to get the reuse set, and it's like this thing's awful. I hate the bar this thing. The, yeah, the Baroth was just like, oh, I, I took, like, I basically learned how to play heavy bowgun, so I didn't have to deal with that fucking fight, and I didn't you retain that because I didn't want to to deal with like. Ammo shit afterwards, but like the yeah. free ammo, ammo with the all the stuff in the arena, and the fact that like challenge quests are a thing also suck. Like I get that they're supposed to be like, oh, can you do this with limited resources? And the answer is probably, but it'll be not fun. I'd have to look up what the Latrion fight's like, but it's a returning monster, so it hopefully shouldn't be the size of, like, a building. The... I don't know. Sin. Yeah, okay. But, oh, the other thing that annoys me about Devil Joe is that they've removed a lot of its personality. Like... Yeah. Like, uh, Devil, Devil Joe is much more like this, like, kind of like, it's almost more of like a goofy monster than like a intimidating one. Like, uh, like, I don't even think it eats its own tail anymore. 
I think that's just not a thing in world. I mean, a lot of a lot of like there are only a couple of things actually eat anymore. It feels like, uh, like when they're hungry, because you they don't have time to get away because of how all the new mechanics and like the open world stuff works. Because you can just like cancel them running away if they're not tempered and immune to flash. And I don't know. I feel like, yeah, it, it's there were a lot of changes that shifted how monsters work. Where's my pen gone? There it is. Okay, I'm done with that area. And I do now have enough graviton cores to proceed, but there are more areas to visit. I'm also hoping that we find out what the update plans for the uh PC version soonish. Because I'm not super fond of not knowing. I want to hit my culture up on. Yeah, that. That's unfortunate, though it does sound like the PC version also has a, some other issues it needs to work out. Yeah, the connections aren't great. Well, even like the. Even like the port is. Like they're working on making the port like run smoother on other people's machines. Yeah. Cause uh, I, for I forget where I read about it. Like uh, Capcom's u the usual PC uh, port team was apparently working on uh, DMC. So the Monster Hunter devs had to do it themselves, and apparently they did a poor job. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I'm glad that my fucking computer can run it well at all, and I'm just accepting that as having spent fucking five hundred, nine hundred dollars to, God, it was nine hundred dollars to fucking build my computer again. Uh -huh. Okay, that's incorrect. So that's incorrect. What? It's not even worth me fighting this stuff. That's good to hear, sir. And I, I have not been playing recently, and usually it's also been like I haven't had uh, folks to play with. Anyway, so. Can't do that. I wonder if I can handle the wyvern that spawns in the tunnels now. I might have a go at that. Just for kicks, since I'm almost certainly going to spawn one. I did reinstall my copy of the world since I'm gonna be available to play it soonish. I should hop on and actually I think the event quest have already changed. Whoops. Cause it's Thursday. Let's see how this goes. Oh nope I have until five Get my ah, this isn't like it'd be terribly difficult at all. Okay. Yeah, I, I hope they finally give us a, a, like I want. I hope, like I would be willing to wait for more like monster updates if it meant that we got a new region with a bunch of monsters in it. But I, I know they probably don't want to make people wait for something like that because I would be down for like a snowy region. 
I am always I'm a sucker for snow, snow. regions. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it's just a it's a really neat aesthetic that a lot of games can do well with. There's also a handful of really cool mm -hmm. snow monsters. Yeah. Uh, and also ice or anything related to ice elemental feels like an afterthought because yeah. that that whole sec section of the game is basically non-existent so like the closest thing there is to like an ice elemental monster is Ligania which is like yeah I guess like yeah and like Kushala Dara has some ice element stuff because of its Remember, wind which is cold, but not actual, like, ice elemental. Yeah, the, the way elements work is really weird and confusing sometimes, because instead of just adding more elements to the game, they decided, well, wind is ice. Uh, water and ice are two different things, but wind and ice are the same. Yeah, it's a little, uh, a little silly. For getting paid. I wonder how much. But what are you gonna do with all that gill anyway? Fucking why is Mog suddenly really greedy about money? I don't know. First we have to burn it, Kubo. I feel like we missed a fucking character moment. Because he's tiny and by Final Fantasy logic you're tiny, you have to be greedy. Fucking potatoes. I'm still upset that this that the fucking uh, scale symbol for Ulda is not only stolen from a previous uh, civilization, but that civilization the scale was representing balancing magic and knowledge, so they wouldn't like fuck up the world with magic, which has been a problem. But Ulda took it. And they went, nah, that fireball, that's military might. And uh, get rid of that fruit of knowledge and replace it with a gem. <laughs> now it's yep. about balancing military might and money. <laughs> it's like, fuck off. Yep, that's how. <laughs> that's capitalism, baby. <laughs> fucking. Hold on. Or, yep, or is. Fucking... It's, it's formally known monetarism. Yeah, Subtlety. Mm -hmm. This many monsters prowling the area. Uh, All you can do is take them out one at a time, starting with the ones in front of us. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad that I didn't just shout, "That's capitalism, baby!" When we did the fucking stream and the fucking Sultana died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that's all capitalism. God. A very, very angry, angry chocobo there, just yelling at me. Whoops. Okay, I can fight those. This is the area where Tondries can spawn. I really kind of don't want to fight Tondries at this stage. Yep, that's uh. <laughs> uh you can recruit the motherfuckers, I'm pretty sure. Yep, you can recruit Don Tondry as well. It's There's an achievement yeah. for it. I might have gotten that achievement, I don't remember. It's one of only two that I never got on the uh, Xbox. Um, He's a fucker. Yep, I, f I fought one successfully, because I completed the best tree, but I never captured one. But he's not too bad when, you, when you're when maxed out. Oh, I think yeah. I need potent engines. I do, but I need, like, f more of them. Right, from here what I need to do is just go right round the far end of this zone.
Don't goblin punch my chocobo. It's not okay. Goblin punch will never stop sounding like a euphemism. <laughs> For what? I don't know. <laughs> it sounds like I shouldn't know. <laughs> And done. Is that the potent engine I need to... Yes. Uh... But I have exactly one <laughs> level four mechanical monster material. So we'll be waiting on that. It's not even a good one. Yep, especially not for a sentinel. I'm not madly desperate for for um, mechanical materials for any other reason. Yeah. There are some good mechanical uh, others, but I... I mean the uh, that uh, that pulse soldier one that I'm using is one of the best. Mm -hmm. I think one of those goblin punches did like. 90% of my chocobo's HP. Must have been the same level. Hmm. I think it's just random in this game, but... Yeah. <laughs> I never did finish my fucking Forge Hub Fiesta this year. Just because other shit was happening, and I got stuck with some bad garbage. Hmm. Oh, well. Fucking cannon here. <laughs> Who the fuck do you think I am? God, my D and D group is really stupid. <laughs> oh boy, what have they done? No, just like one of them was just like, yeah, I figured the the game wasn't happening today. I just didn't remember that I didn't do my sad dab, and they they did a sad dab emote, and then they post in like this swan, and then they just have this picture of a really distressed swan doing like a dab motion with its wings. <laughs> And it's slapping itself in the face with its wings. And I'm just like, fucking, this is my party. Oh my god, I found the Otacon of this game. Yeah. God, what a jerk. I think we have to interfere with that at some point. Yeah. Can't remember how this zone works. Me neither. Yes, that's 
That's what I wanted to do. Whoop. Oh man, bombs. I sure I'm doing absolutely no damage to these bombs. Please kill the bomb. Thank you. One of this zone's hidden areas is like here. And that's the wild artifact gate that I need to come back to. But before I do that. going on with storage space today? <laughs> Every fucking time, huh? It's fine. Like, I've got, <sighs> I've got enough space left for like six hours of recordings. Buddy are out here doing research on monsters in the area, but I can't get a hold of him. Can you find him? He should have some sort of message for me. Oh god, the joke selling guy. <laughs> I remember. Um, I found some screenshots of him. I liked one of his jokes enough that I took a fucking screenshot of it. What do you have to do to get the flowers to spawn? Oh, there it is. Right, you're the one who wants jokes. Uh, who's the other guy I need to talk to? Oh my god! They really just make you walk the length of this area twice. Three yep. times, even. I guess they're just trying to make you spawn a distortion in this area so you get the, the basic idea of them. Is that God, comma, gamers are idiots, or is that God gamers are idiots, Sanai? That's a valid question, and I hate that it is. <laughs> Language, it's fun. I'm fighting all these munchkins, and I don't know why. Because, like, the latest 
gamer thing that I've seen is Puddlegate. Oh, Jesus. That is so stupid. Have you seen it? Yeah, I saw Do you know what it is? I've seen the screenshots. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Puddlegate is the Spider-Man thing. Yeah. It's... <sighs> Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? Ah, uh, Digital Foundry have a lot to answer for. I think what bothers me the most is their inability to name things. <laughs> Everything must be a gate now. Gates everywhere. Oh, my My dad was watching some, uh, some show where, uh, Keeper Sutherland is the president. And... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I and I only know the actor's name because every time I'm listening I'm listening to it I think it's Big Boss from NBS. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, shit. Uh, but in one of the episodes I was overhearing they had they had their own stupid gate conspiracy, which I guess makes more sense in the context of that because it's like a political yep. show. <laughs> But it, it was something really stupid, and I can't- it sounded like really funny, I can't remember what it was. Right, it's jokes to guy. Oh, this is gonna bother me until I remember it, because it sounded so stupid. My buddy asked you to come look for me to see if I'm alright? Fucking Brant. Who put you up to this? They're good jokes, Brant. <laughs> Oh my hey, god! <laughs> it took me a moment! Oh shit! No! Oh, they're good jokes, Sam. I don't know. All I just said was just fucking. They are actually good jokes, Brant. Brant is here. He was here all along. Uh. Uh, I made a joke. I'm sorry. I had to be there. Also, hi, Sam. Uh, yeah, hi, Sam. Oh, I have my I have my volume too loud as well. Sorry. So it's just. Really sharp. <laughs> no, it's not your fault at all. Uh. This medical textbook is useless. It has no appendix. How are you, Sam? I'm doing all right. Um. Was it? I'm, what's I'm, the one that you tweeted? The Noah one, Devin. Magic was useless. They didn't run as huh? No. I. I. It was one of the. It might have been. The book of magic was useless. They didn't run a spell check. Was the one I had. This oh, that's time. right. Yeah. Need an arc. I know a guy. That's the only good joke in this sequence. <laughs> Not true, but. Um. Well, I've been packing. So I'm going to Manchester again tomorrow. Oh boy. Yeah. Down. Here, take this. Oh, and one other thing. Tell us about the shortly, sorry. No worries. Whole weekend where I'm not playing any video games. How dreadful. 
I say that, but when you're supposed to be playing The Witcher, what a mercy. Oh, I found it! I found what the stupid, uh, controver the fake controversy in, uh, the designated Survivor show was called. And it, it, it's so stupid sounding. It's Suckergate. <laughs> what? Okay. I don't, I, I don't want to look up the context. Somebody had a, a, a suspect run in with an octopus, probably. <laughs> Maybe. The whole next television. No, no, I, I, actually, now that I think about it, I think it was like the the president in the show called somebody like a sucker or something like that. Something, something, something really boring. But the name is so stupid sounding, and I had to hear it like a million times because that was like the topic of the episode <laughs> that I happened to walk in on. I also kept mishearing it for like Zucker, like <laughs> as if it was like a Facebook thing. <laughs> this is Which I, have, um, I, I guess that would actually gate. be a gate. <laughs> I'm I'm just thinking of um fucking dumb uh. Like, from like what? Eight years ago, Bigot Gate with Gordon Brown. <laughs> uh, it was a really dumb thing. Yep. Also, I looked away and suddenly, almost everybody's dead. <laughs> <laughs> that does yeah, happen do with Yasma. I am going to to, to to switch on the Witcher. You're going to switch her on. And then play The Witcher. No, sorry. <laughs> no, it's just the other way around. <laughs> yeah. That's how you get the cards. <sighs> oh no. Video games. <laughs> On my fucking, I'm clearing everything very quickly playthrough, which I should probably honestly get back to instead of doing puzzle games. Um, I'm doing all the romance <laughs> side quests just because I fucking can and I'm running over everything like a zillion miles an hour. Um, and it's dumb. There, there's, there's a romance card for a random lady in chapter one, where if you give her tulips, she'll fuck you. Oh, is that what that's for? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, now I've got the quest, but I just didn't realize that was the quote-unquote reward. Yep. Also, not getting romance cards on stream, probably a good idea. <laughs> Because they're un they're uncensored thanks to being the enhanced edition. Oh yeah. wow! No full frontal, but definitely a few topless ladies, and I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> no getting banned from Twitch. I mean, it automatically marked my stream for mature audiences. Really? So like, I think automatically, but yeah, like probably because you're playing I, The Witcher. <laughs> Yeah, that's my that's my assume, assumption. Oh. Like, y if you're playing on stream games that are for mature audiences, it's gonna because there's a database in it all as well anyway. Yeah. The Which... problem I'd the problem I'd imagine with that is that like almost every game these days is mature rated. Um. Like a kinda yeah. It, it's starting to. At least the really popular ones are. Yeah, the, the huge... I feel like there's a bit of a push away from that in some ways. Yeah, like, uh, I think Overwatch isn't mature, and it's like a it's popular team. shooter. Yeah. Mm. And, like, Fortnite is one of the bigger ones now. Is that not mature? I I'd be not. very surprised if it was, given that, like, five-year-olds are playing it. I mean, well, like, five-year-olds play Call of Duty, which is sure. definitely mature rated. So and they play GTA. <laughs> yeah. So it, it hasn't mattered forever. I didn't play GTA until I was like 18, so, <laughs> so I was a. I mean, it didn't come out boy. until I was 10. <laughs> yeah, Fortnite is T. All right. I mean, one of the first games I ever played was Mortal Kombat, which... <laughs> wow. <laughs> one of the first games I, like, well... I watched my dad play a lot of Quake 2, which is, uh... Quake 2! <laughs> so... It's weird. It, 
It's weird, like, uh, thinking something like Quake 2 would be, like, comparable in ratings to, like, it's a GTA. Like wild. Sorry, carry on. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's like, I guess, once you hit, like, a certain threshold of violence, you're in the same rating group as, like, a GTA. Mm. It's like the original um, Perfect Dark is, um, re like, when it was released on the 360, the 360 and um, the N64, it was rated 18. Yep. Over here. Which is, like, and the re-release of that game is, like, a 12. <laughs> How times change. I mean, the first game I ever bought with, like, my own money was Doom 2, which was a, a an 18. And I got that yeah. when I was, like, el no, I must have been 10. Can't even have been 11. No, I didn't really... I think because I was mostly playing, um, still into, like, Japanese video games, uh, and a lot of those weren't necessarily rated high. Like a lot of RPGs and stuff were just kind of still within age range. But, I think it was, like, I think the first, like, game I bought that was above my age was Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Oh, fuck's sake. Don't want to fight more munchkins. <clears throat> I think the first actual game with an 18 rating I got was Resident Evil 5. all the others managed to get away with 15s even though they were actually kind of more violent than 5 was in ways mm. you come might down be to either 10 or 11 health bars I don't feel like getting out of my chair to double check Hard to count very small squares from across the room. I'm also no longer making the mistake of fighting at four times speed at this part of the fight. <laughs> Might be worth paying a bit more attention than that, yeah. I mean, it worked up until now, but like... I turn four times speed on and oops, everybody's dead. Yep. <laughs> God, I've really been playing for like two and a half hours. What am I doing? Still can't believe I got fucking ganked by a random boss monster in fucking Witcher. <laughs> See the commander. Well, he poo pooed my Where do I find ghouls? I Apparently, the ruins have been, and they weren't from any battle. There was a direct. I've never heard of anything like this. I shouldn't stick my nose. I think it's going to be a short Witcher playing session. Sounds like the best kind. <laughs> Are we going to see any kind of Tondry? Nope. Doesn't look like it. For some reason, whenever I hear 
school. I always just think of Scooby Doo in the ghoul school. You brought back the message from my buddy, did you? Which well, is the game just crashed. Nice. Which is a girl school <laughs> with go ghosts. You, you left me another message? <laughs> you already know. I'm not like you guys. I don't belong in this room. If you see him again, I used to watch a lot of Scooby Doo movies. Anyway. There were a lot of Scooby Doo music movies to watch. Yeah, they're still they still make them. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they're even crossovers <laughs> with WWE. I watched that one. And it wasn't bad. I kind of want to watch it because it's probably really dumb. It's fun. Like I enjoyed it. Like me, All who's that... not even that much of a wrestling guy, just enjoyed All... it. All that I know is the gif of frickin' I, I think it's like John Cena like jumps up and like throws a boulder or something <laughs> stupid. It's like that's I, great. I, I think there's two of them though. That's the thing. Like I think they did a second yeah. one. Yeah. And I've only seen the first one. I mean, there's also like, like they did a crossover with the Flintstones. They did quite a few crossovers. They, they, they frickin' oh, produced the uh, Surfs Up sequel. Yes. Which is bizarre. Oh, shit, <laughs> because no, it's like a... this completely unrelated property. <laughs> there's a Scooby Doo Batman Brave and the Bold crossover that just came out. <laughs> That's a what? sentence. This, which is like, I, I love Batman Brave and the Bold. It's so fun. Uh, but yeah. Uh... Where would the Reverend be? The Reverend would be at his chapel. Or at his house next to the chapel. I found out what was up with that fucking extra passage in the fucking crypt, by the way. You have to fucking come back for no reason, apropos of nothing, and people who are trying to dig deeper in the crypt clear it out, and then you can go fight more shit and get more trophy huh. kills, and it's just like, fucking really? Years ago, I never before seen... Right. I think with this one, I've got all four versions of Yashas Massif um, unlocked. I'm just playing this, I just kind of want to play a better computer RPG. <laughs> yeah, this really just makes me want to play Dragon Age. I really want to play um, Divinity Original Sin, actually. That would be fun. It, it being kind of having co op stuff though. Yeah. Uh, let's go up. And I and I just hit growing threat. <laughs> oh boy. Only now. Or is that is that the second growing threat that you're hitting? I do, I don't think so. <laughs> Oh, I'm just gonna have to find the Reverend's not in his house or the chapel. I'm just gonna Good have to luck, find anyway. a campfire now. Wait till 3 a.m. Barge into his house in the middle of the night. Just chilling and giving you the welcome to Yashas Massif speech next to the blood orb. Welcome to Yashas Massif. We have blood orbs. Yep. Ah, that's another blood orb. Okay, hey, we came to trust the village's most prominent residence, as you told the Reverend. The ancient series was yep, time to. <laughs> time to <laughs> run over to the Reverend. Oops. Like, as not great as this game is, I feel like the podcast is maybe gonna be a bit more fun than the last one. <laughs> I mean, the fucking hope so. <laughs> last time was miserable because the last book was miserable. 
and we were just worn down from having to read all these books that were basically all fucking pointless. Yeah, they were just getting progressively worse. And we're gonna end with an optimistic note of like, oh wait, a, a maybe decent mechanical experience is coming after this. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Good luck. <clears throat> There's the Reverend. Where? I can't find him. <laughs> He's outside the chapel for me. But well, I also waited until dawn, so. Oh, thank you. Look, look, you'll Pray. get to end. You'll get to end on the best note if you just end the podcast on the free to play Gwent game. <laughs> <laughs> Or, no, I... Witch or Witcher 4 in, like, 2025. <laughs> I'm glad this isn't, like, a CD Projekt Red podcast, because I don't want to fucking play Cyberpunk. Uh... I, I'm, like, getting less and less optimistic on Cyberpunk <laughs> with each, like, every small thing. But... Yeah. You know, the, my worry is maybe they are just coasting on the fact that they managed to make The Witcher 3. Probably. Even though, like, some of those writers on that game aren't working on Cyberpunk. So... Maybe that Because they did, they did bleed a lot of talent after Witcher 3. But, like, a lot of employees left. Because, uh... Apparently, not a great company to work for. Oh, wow. With the management saying, unions are for poor people. Oh! You don't say. Yeah. Wait, I don't need to hear this way. I think a lot of the, um, I think a, few, a fair few writers went on to, um, Dying Light 2. Hmm. Oh. Which, that game looks odd. Because, hmm. like, no, I don't know if anyone saw, like, the first Dying Light and decided, you know what, let's make this more of an RPG. I, it's interesting. Because, like, I, I don't think that, first Dying Light is just basically, like, a zombie FPS with parkour, right? Yeah, it's kind of a slight, like, progression to it. But, like, fucking... Like, for Dying Light 2, they're bringing Chris Avalon out on the stage. I don't have any point of reference for who that is. He's, like, a honest. big computer RPGs guy. Hmm. Like... I think he did Planescape Torment? No. That sounds about it's right. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay, time to go kill all the Salamandra again. And then all the townspeople after the beast. Again. Yeah, he was the lead designer on Planes Hit Torment. Mm, okay. Um, uh, lead designer on a lot of. Uh, was that he kind of worked on a lot of. Um, lead designer on a lot of. Uh, what's their name? Obsidian. Right. Stuff. Ah, that, that'd do it. So yeah, it's, that's when you know it's taken the RPG stuff seriously, I guess. I have so many Bargast skulls in my inventory, who can I sell them to? You can sell them to Abigail. Oh, good, because I've just walked into Abigail's hut. That's convenient. Oh. I just, like, got teleported into a group of enemies because they crowded me around the door. Fun.
Right, that should be all the quest items. Now to go and hand in all the quests. Also, there's a lady up there with a speech bubble that I think I need to talk to, but I don't want to spend all my uh, flipping gazelle greens on a crazy chocobo this early in the game. Systems I'd forgotten about, you get more time per gazelle green on crazy chocobos the more fragments you have. That is weird and I didn't know that. Uh -huh. It's like it, you start off getting like seven seconds per green and it goes up to like 35 which is That's... a pretty big difference. Yeah. How many fragments do I actually have so far? There's just a skull floating here. I have 57. Oh, I just found a book on Ifland's prophecy. Yep. When do I get found... my silver sword? Chapter 2. Uh, one for humans, another for, for monsters. They're both for monsters, really. If you think about it. <laughs> There's that that deep, rich, moral complexity of the Witcher games that work. Well, like the thing is, it's like, like the the approach with like the Witcher games is like there's that trailer where like fucking Geralt's got his sword out and the guy's like, "What are you doing?" and he's just like, "Killing monsters," <laughs> as he's about to stab the dude. But like, you actually play The Witcher three and they just take the mick out of that, <laughs> like because it's not really that game. Like, The Witcher 1 is, but, like, The Witcher 3 is not. It's probably a relief. Okay, I also fucked the witch. Yay, let's go kill a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> if that isn't the most video games thing. Right, Gerhalus Blossom. To the west of the gate. That would be the one on the lower level. Yes. I need five white metal pedals, and I have three. Where is the technician? Come on, give me. Oh the fuck! Ball again. You know what I was just saying about that. It's a chocobo ride. Yep. <laughs> Turns out it's required for the next quest. <laughs> Let's just make sure I've got enough greens. They aren't that expensive, and I'm bad at this jump. Also, I have like 88,000 gil because there isn't much to spend it on. Whoops. <sighs> I am now on the last 10 health bars. Also, there has to be like an all cards uh, speed run category for The Witcher. Uh, all cards? Oh, yeah. Uh, all... the, the fuck cards. That, that uh, too, I think Sam was thinking Gwent. No, 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 no. Who told you that? That's probably harder. Because, <laughs> well. 
they literally patched in like several cards every so often. Great. Time to go fetch Shawnee and then go into Vizima. Yay, everyone I have encountered here is dead. <coughs> Sarah. Thank you. See, it it probably never happened, but I'd like for all for like an all romance subcategory cards to end up like somehow on a GDQ and they have to like talk over what the cards actually are. And it's like the you know, these these are all the cards you get for helping out these nice ladies. Um, I don't think they could act the problem is it's like they have to show that on Twitch, which they cannot. <laughs> Yeah, except like there, like it does have. There are censored versions second. in the game, so like you just have to hit a certain option and or not play the enhanced edition. No, I got it. I got it. They 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 mod it so all the cards are replaced with like stupid like speed run memes. <laughs> Is it, yeah, <laughs> it, it reminds me of when uh, you, uh, Lady Killer in a Binds. When uh, uh, Christine Love patched in a version, where, the Twitch like, version with the sweaters. The, yeah, where all the nudity was replaced with everyone wearing sweaters, and she saw a huge spike in sales. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I'd probably prefer the sweater version anyway. It's fair. I've never played that game, but I've, I've owned it for ages. But I haven't got around to play it. I'm not particularly fond of Love's writing, nor the idea of uh, <laughs> English language visual novels handling eroticism, honestly. I, I'm not gonna get into it, but like, it just, yeah. I have no interest. <laughs> Fair. That might have been too soon. That's probably right. But not enough to give me the crystal. Curses. Oh, what quest do I have? Where do I... I need to find ghouls. I found one ghoul. You should do the crypt. Okay. I got a bit more off yet. Then. If you if, are you, has the Reverend requested that you do favors for Odo Meikle and and Aaron? Yes, um, Aaron uh, Odo Meikle. If you go talk to Meikle, he wants you to clear out the crypt. Cool. Okay. Chapter two entered. Where do I find Nico? He is. He's up to the north. He's at the merchant's gate into the city, which is the bridge up north on the river. Okay. The only thing that seems this quest seems to be tracking is Harren's house, so I'm just gonna go there first. <laughs> oh god, what's she doing? And will you need help burying the body? Uh... God, I wish this game had like an. <laughs> Chai, stop being a gribble. Oh no! I mean, you've got Alfie. Alfie could defend you, I'm sure. <laughs> Alfie, Alfie, are you there? Can you get chai for me? Alfie. I'm just going to change the click movement for a bit. I have 
found proof of the terrorist action. Hey. I wonder, how did the Seeress of Padra seal the paradox? Did she interfere with the timeline? As far as I know, far seers generally avoid tampering with time. But if that's what she did, it must have been dealing with something much worse than anything we've ever seen before. The distortion that emerged in the city started to spread like a plague, Kubo. If it wasn't stopped, it would have swallowed the whole realm, Kubo. Right. Was the only option left for her to make sure the entire city wasn't destroyed. Time for some hands of time. <laughs> and then there is the risk of me getting into a very hard encounter. Should have enough HP to be able to do it, but we'll see how it goes. Keep forgetting to put on the ring. I did level up all my silver stuff even though I don't have a silver sword. I forgot how that worked. Yeah, it's going to be enough witchering for me now. Surprise lizards! One temporal distortion, and for this, I will need a silver again. No, no, we have to stop. I hear you. That'd be 
this. Here we go. Clear that. Might be able to do ones that only have five numbers myself. Might not need the solver for those. <coughs> <coughs> That's a one at the top. One, three, two, three, two. One, three. One, three, two, three, two, one, three. Oh no! Uh, let's. I took a step too far and the timer started. Right. Uh, one, one, four, three. One, 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 two, three. One, one, four, three. One, 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 two, three. Solve. Three, five, five, four, two, four. Three, five, five, four, two, four. Two, four, two, three, five. Two, four, two, three, five. So. Back in a sec. Five. Two. Four. Four. Anomaly resolved. Just that one. We stepped into the rift and solved the paradox. It was the same paradox. The same ancient threat that Yule had banished into the void beyond so long ago. The Cirrus distorted the timeline to save an entire city. I have to wonder what went through her mind as she performed such an act. Did she know how her intervention would change things? Did she look into the future? Was she able to see the consequences of what she did? Okay, a different space-time distortion has appeared. And I'm back. Welcome back. Hooray. Uh. Okay, that's hilarious. That's bad and wrong. Whoa, that's... The game is busted as fuck. Actual distortion. Fuck. Let's get away from that. <laughs> What's happened? It equipped the... It equipped the steel sword, my Witcher steel sword, in the wrong slot. So, it was equipped in my dagger slot, which means it was both on my hip and pointed up directly through G Geralt's fucking shoulder. Oh, wow. Because it automatically picked it up and equipped it, and you can have, like, four additional fucking accessories equipped, and it's just like, why is this system here? I'm hoping there's some kind of, like, exploit where you 
somehow manipulate the game to equip certain weapons in the wrong spot. And they do, like, more damage or something stupid like that. Eh. Alright, I need to run because back. That, because that situation definitely sounds like that could be a possibility. <laughs> Oops. Oh yeah, my favourite detail, like this, this book I've been reading that has the thing about um, FF13 in it, my favourite detail that it got wrong is that it said it called it said the ATB bar was red. It's like, huh. not normally, dude. Like a red bar fills up across the screen. No, it's her. Only Isn't if it? you've got haste on. Uh -huh. Yeah. Could they not at least the check? <laughs> I have committed an unforgivable crime, and now I must. Like, if you're gonna get as specific to list what the color of bar is, you think you'd at least check? Yeah. Fortunately, nothing in the argument turned on on that, but uh, on the color anyway. But... I don't know. It just, it just seems like a really weird thing to. Who they're just smart enough to always cast haste? <laughs> I mean, he did say that he'd watched lots of other people play the game, so maybe he was just watching good players. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Katsuroi, <laughs> Yule is kind of explaining at the moment why she's an orb, but basically she fucked with the timeline. This reminds me of the piece of um, Shimagami Tensei for Apocalypse. They forgot to localize, and it's just it was originally untranslated in Japanese hmm. because it's a part of the game where you have to do really badly to see it. Ah. Yeah, I remember that. It was just like if you're, they they didn't ever have a like a test case in the localization because no one who was playing that far into the game was doing that badly but i guess some speedrunners saw it because their run was going particularly poorly hmm. yeah it was, it was on the final boss yeah right and that created a paradox which is what we're facing now you knew what the future was going to bring when she made her choice she knew she was going to cause pain and suffering for a lot of people she also knew that was her only choice. Luckily, the localization of the four games is pretty decent. It's not like a yeah. Persona 5 situation oh, where yeah. they clearly the spread right themselves way too if thin. The monster, yes. It's weird because, like, Atlas, like, US team has been really good with localization lately because they've been handling um, Yakuza. Yeah. Right. The beast is oh. I'll start that after Yasma dies in the next, like, <laughs> nine health bars. Right, where do oh, I actually I find it? Too, and it's good. Yes. Ah, back to the other side of the map again. Finally get to see all of Kamurocho in the new engine instead of just two-thirds of it. <laughs> I still kind of want to work on, like, I, my computer can emulate PS2, so I might just emulate Yakuza 1 and 2. Because mm. I know you, you had some issues with Kiwami, you took some umbrage with some of the stuff well, Kiwami has. The thing I take with, my, my issue with Kiwami is kind of more to do with the fact that I've played one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's my point, though. Hmm. I, I kind of want to play... Uh, the original release of like one just to see like the weird localization difference. Oh yeah, no, it's really weird. Like fucking Michael Madsen and Mark Hamill 
Just grunting. Uh, the original... Everyone's now speaking English and they call each other different names because the way last and first names work. work. Well, no, the names have been pretty consistent. It's just like there's one character who has a different name in the first three games. I thought they call, uh, like... Oops. They call, like, Kiryu, like, Kazuma for, like, the entire game or something like that. That's <laughs> sure not the monster that I was intending not to... Not quite. Like, they... They, they know, fight you. I, I remember hearing something weird like that. It's, um... The Kazuma, not Kazuma, but Kazuma, um, is changed to Fuma in the first three games. Let's not to be confused with Kazuma Kiryu. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's um, Kazuma Shintaro, but since 4, they've gone back on that. And oh, yeah, it back. They, they, they keep it pretty close to the. No, why did I do that? But they, they've been, like, they had a moment of using all the honorifics in the localization, and they don't do that anymore. I just want to play the series, and I don't want to wait for all the fucking stuff to get PC ports. Mm. I mean, that might be the way to go, though. Yeah, I know, but, like... Or, 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 or at least follow the PS4 releases, like I am. Like, yeah, zero, like, that's the thing. Like, zero... If through Kiwami 2 is probably a good first three to start. Yeah, I would say that actually, like, it's worth just starting on Zero and going through Kiwami 1 and 2. And, like, because the thing is, when I played them, Kiwami 1 and 2 did, n were not out. <laughs> uh, uh Kiwami is out on PC, though. No, it's on PS4. But it, every time there's a sale, it goes on for a decent price. Because it wasn't full price when it came out. Uh, but I think Kiwami is coming to PC. Yeah, it is. It just doesn't have a date. It won't be long, because, like... There was, like, seven months between Zero and Kiwami when they released. I mean, emulate it if you want to, like, well, I mean, so that's, the, the, the yeah. plus with emulating it on PS2 is that it's free. Yes. So, you don't uh -huh. have to put any money investment in the thing you might not even be interested in. The thing, though, is then there's 3, 4, and 5, which are <coughs> exclusive uh, PS3 at the moment. Yeah, they, they've, they've announced that they're doing that now. And yeah, they have. In considering the success, the remasters will probably find their way to PC as well. Yeah. In the long it's... term future. I mean, yeah, it's just not a. Uh, it's not a huge issue to port them to PC anymore, because like PS3. Yeah, the cell this whole architecture. architecture. Yep. God, what a weird timeline we're in right now, where. The big successes <coughs> right now are Monster Hunter and frickin' Yakuza. Well, like, Yakuza's not- like, it's still a niche game. Yeah, I know, but like, it's successful <coughs> enough that it's actually getting localized. Yeah. Like, well, that's the, the thing, people made a big enough stink about Yakuza uh, 5 for Can a I while. Hear about it? And I also he have to hear about it all the time, like it's like a Persona release on. That's well, the thing, the thing, the thing that I think, like, propelled Yakuza is the fact that people who had oh, the copy shit. of um, Zero were allowed to share uh, um, PS4 share stuff. Yeah, which ironically is the opposite of Persona. Yeah. <laughs> But the fact that people were able to, like, basically broadcast a lot of, like, the really fun moments of Yakuza 0 is, I think, is, like, a really strong job to just show that game to people. Yeah, like, like, like Yakuza, especially 0, it really lends itself to, like, here's these, like, goofy, wacky things that mm. are in the game, and, like, you can share them in, like, tiny clips. 
And yeah, then you it's... could also say it's like, oh, but there's also the serious story that's like also kind of goofy, but <laughs> is also like an interesting crime drama. I would say like Yakuza has weaknesses in plotting. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and like... but its strength is characters. Yeah, like I wouldn't say they're exceptionally well written crime dramas. They're just they, they just have very compelling characters. And yeah, it's in, and it's interesting to watch them. And interact. Yakuza Zero, I think, hinges a lot more on character. Yakuza it's Zero's a... plot is so stupid. It's stupid, but it's like uh, Yakuza it's Zero. Fucking lot. It's <laughs> the the plot of Yakuza Zero centers around a one meter square piece of land. <laughs> And yeah. it's like this, and it's this wild but it's conspiracy. during the bubble era. Yeah. Yeah, Yakuza yeah. 0 and Kiwami are both only 20 bucks each uh. at full price on PS4. And I kind of want to, because they've been out for like a year, year and a half. <clears throat> yeah. Literally a year for Kiwami. Hmm. Um, Kiwami, Kiwami 2 also released a discounted at, uh, Nope. Board. <laughs> yes, it nope. did. It's no, 50. what? It's full price over here. That, 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 that's discounted, technically. It's like, it was like 40 quid here. That's full price. It's, well, it's $50 it's, on the US PSN. Wow. It, uh, right. I can, I can pull up my order, but it was it was slightly discounted when I bought it, because I, I quickly switched my pre-order from uh, Monster Hunter to Kiwami, because we're going to be playing World anyway, and I didn't have to double up on Monster Hunter. Anyway, I am going to call it for tonight, because that has been three hours. I probably could beat that boss, but also it would be hard. So I'll just come back and do it later. Bark a bark. Bark a bark a bark. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Bird. Yeah. Yeah. Bark a bark a bark. Yeah. 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 Anyway, yeah. thanks for the company, yeah. and good night. Chai, stop being a gribble. Good night.